art I create is a kind of color poetry. It is full of mood, the beauty inherent in the colors themselves, and is a transmitter of a language of feeling. Original art of all kinds can raise the aesthetic of your environment to a higher level, a higher vibration. And this art in particular also creates an entry into an inner world, a connection to magic, a sense of wonder, timelessness, eternity, deep space and inner space, deep sea and deep feeling. I'm quite interested in the energy in water, the way that water will hold the energy of your feeling. This art is about the emotions. It's not to be understood with the mind. It's about feelings and developing a connection to a feeling language that is not based on words. The colors are it speak to me in my feeling life, and so I feel into the colors. I don't think about the colors. I don't have a like mental construct and a name attached so much to the colors. It's really how they make me feel. Painting is a blind person's profession because it's not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels, and it's emptying our feeling life onto the canvas. The colors themselves inspired me to use them in the way that I'm using them. Color is so emotional. This art is about emotions. It's not about the mind. The energy and the colors themselves, I'm just drawn to them. I'm pulled to them, I love them. They're just, it's pure beauty. Colors are extremely personal. Certain colors, like traditional associations, like with the chakras, like the red chakra. The first chakra is red, and that's like your survival, fear, instincts. Red? Mm. Come back to that one. Mm, passion. Green. Peace. Green. Earth. Turquoise. Excitement. Violet. Me. I'm Viola. <laughs> I use soothing colors to me, the purples, the turquoise, the blues, and it just calms me. Magenta is a very, to me, is a, you know, it's in the red family, so it could be in that kind of danger, fear zone, but it's also to me joy and expansion. It's purple and blue and violet and green and orange and red and yellow and all the colors that are in between those colors, you know, it's persimmons and grapes and bananas and it's, you know, trees and leaves and dogs and cats. Color is who we are, all the different energies within us, all the different moods within us. It's the ability to take what is within and have a vehicle to put it without. It's hard to assign colors. I have a whole series I want to do on emotions, painting emotions. And I've been working through it and it's like you can't really assign one color to sadness. You know, it's like all the colors are in sadness. You know, or assign one color to happiness. It's more about the intensity of the color, the energy. Like when you're painting, it's about the stroke, the energy that you are putting into the painting more than the actual color itself.
I found that I really liked the raw canvas and I love abstract work. I love it. To me, it holds the feeling. It really can tell a story about feeling in an abstract piece that's open to your own interpretation, your own experience. A ghost. A ghost image. Yeah. A gossamer. Mm. Like wings. Mm -hmm. Painting days are my happy days. <laughs> painting makes me incredibly happy. I love the process of painting. I love the colors. I love the motion. And um, I love waiting for the surprise to see how the painting will turn out. My process developed because I wasn't able to get the results that I wanted to on a consistent basis. I started painting and I painted 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 as much as I could. And then I would have a breakthrough, you know, with just the certain kind of materials. And I painted this series, you know, of five paintings that was just. I thought, oh great, now I've got it, you know, it's just, it was, everything worked. And then the next week I went back and I couldn't, and I did the same thing, I thought, and it didn't work, but it turns out that the weather was different, the humidity was different, the, my mood was different, I didn't know how much water I'd put in, so I started becoming way more scientific about my approach, and I started keeping a, a notebook and writing down what I did. I even started to measure how much water I was using to how much paint, just to get an idea at the beginning as to the proportions I was using and why it wasn't coming out consistently. It has a lot to do with chemistry. So I'm gonna mix some paints from pigments. And I first got interested in this because I love working with metallics and I love working with really rich colors. And working with the pigments allows me to put as much into my paints as possible. I'm just going to pour a little. I want to avoid dropping the water directly onto it because it will raise a little cloud. And I'm just going to pour some water in here. Um, if you can see this, what happens is it just is absorbed by the powder. And so I'm just going to mix the pigment into the water. You can see it's causing a little bit of smoke, a little bit of powder coming up. And, and it forms a really luscious little paste. Yeah, can you hear that? Can you hear the sound? No, it's just, this is, it's like butter. It's just so, so yummy. And to experience the colors so pure like this, with just water mixed in them is, uh, yeah, so this is, I can mix it a little bit longer, but you can just see the buttery consistency. And then from here you could add whatever you'd like in terms of a uh, medium to make it watercolor or tempera. This is mostly earth pigments is what we're using to paint with. And you can see these colors here. And you can see that's the earth tone, pa the palettes. Um, but there's also metallic um, pigments. Um, I like the sparkle. Here's, you know, look at that luscious gold and silver. And these actually are designed to be made into watercolors, but you can take whatever kind of pigments that you want. I'm a real addict for the glitter. Even if you do know the science and you do know what proportions you used and uh, you know the, the way the evaporation rate is different diff by different days and you just, you know one of the great lessons in art is, is non-attachment. You don't become attached to what it looks like when it's wet, when it dries it'll 
It could be completely different. Depends on how well the colors are holding that day, how much flow there is. Just let it be what it is and walk away. I have so much fun with the process. So it's like some things turn out and some don't. I feel like it's sort of like nature looking out and watching the clouds, they're always changing. I like to use different things on it, like spoons back of the spoon, really. My foam uh, feathers creates different appearances and different feelings. When I first went through my initial struggle with painting, when I was looking at that canvas, and I was really upset, uh, you know, by what I was painting at first, um, what I really, it was really about self-acceptance. It was a reflection of who I was, what I was doing, and just starting to, like, just let myself be the way I am. And let the painting I do be the way it is. And from there it blossoms. My process is evolving always with, like just with the refinement of the use of the materials that I'm using. That's one way that it evolves. But also, it's, I think that my experience with painting is really deepening the more that I am learning about my own emotional life and just the emotional life of everyone and how important that is and how related that is to the kind of painting that we're doing. It's deepening into really being a mode of healing for people. Just to be able to come and, and set their day aside and to paint can really center you and bring you back to your, your spirit. It's very valuable these days to have that in your life. My friend and I went into the public school and did a class for the art fair and, and we passed out little canvases and they were painting on them and they were just starved in the schools for art. They just ate it up, they just loved it. It's like a person's birthright to be able to paint things, you know? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I see my value as a teacher mostly in what I don't teach you. I'm kind of like an unteacher. I get people started and then let them go and try to stay out of the way as much as I can. I used to like more subdued colors to look at, but now mm -hmm. as I paint, I feel that whatever is inside of me wants to express stronger mm -hmm. colors mm -hmm. than those mm -hmm. subdued colors that I used to mm -hmm. like. I basically invite you into a space where others are painting. I'm going to put some water on part of the canvas and leave this part dry. This is raw canvas, not prepared, <laughs> it has no gesso on it. Just kind of pushing the water in. 
Then I'm just gonna pour a little bit of paint on both sides. This is just to show you the difference with water or without water. See how it beads up. And then I have a brush. And I basically just see how it basically does, paints itself. You're just letting the energy of the water work. Then over here, there's no water. You just have to kind of push, do a little more brushing. Push the paint into the canvas a little more. The colors stay a little bit more intense because I don't have so much water diluting them. When you're painting, you can put as much water on as you want. You can put no water on. It's just a matter of playing with it to see what you like best. You have to push a little harder on that side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have less water over there? No water. No water well, at all. A little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And it flows off the canvas. Gorgeous. Keeping this simple creates an easy opening into your own playful experimentation. And then I keep you interested long enough for your own creative impulse and your own powerful and unique expression to unfold and develop.
I think that I can really help others in this process because I've been through it myself. Especially those who have been inhibited in their creativity somewhere in their life. They've been stuck somewhere. Somebody in elementary school said they couldn't draw or you know everybody else is doing these beautiful pictures and they couldn't do something and so they just kind of turn that part of themselves off. So I have a lot of compassion for that in people because I went through it myself and I know that with a little encouragement it doesn't take long to get through that and it can open up a whole wonderful world. Wow, beautiful. Yes. Yellow, blue, purple. Um, the bright, intense. Bright, intense colors, yeah, yeah. I used to like more subdued colors to look at, but now mm -hmm. as I paint, I feel that whatever is inside of me wants to express stronger mm -hmm. colors. Just right. So this is some kind of board that you got from a thrift store. It had a frame around it. So I just put gesso over the painting that was on there. And now I'm going to just put this back into the frame it came with. Yeah, and it's really more. adhering nicely. It's holding. Beautiful, beautiful color. Just gorgeous. What I normally do is I wet the canvas down, so that lets the paint move around once I drop it in there. And all I do is I just take some paint and just throw it in there until I feel it's good. Sometimes I use too much water and I get weird stuff. Pretty. You get a great explosion of color. Let flow. It's a lot of water in that. Yeah, I know. Just use that glow thing. So. Do you want the hair dryer? No, it's not. No. Oh, you blow it? Yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Fun. Kind of look at it. Maybe let it dry and come back at it later. This is the paint that's peeled out of the bucket from when um, Julia, actually, you, you painted this last right, week. Right. And she peeled the dried paint out. This came out of the bucket. That's the bottom. Now she's going to put it into some one of her paintings. These are all things that she's collected. This is a painting that I'm thinking that maybe of putting this will be like a collaborative mm -hmm. painting. We've done another one like that before where she's given me some of her old canvases and mm -hmm. given me for permission to use them. It's like a beautiful moon. Seafoam green. The ocean waves. Color is energy. Color is light. Color is feeling. Is the red light on? Uh, no. Good. So I won't even tell you if we're rolling or not, okay? Oh, I better stop talking like that then. <laughs> Beauty. Green. Life. Turquoise. My mother. I just paint. I just feel strongly and I put it on paper or canvas or whatever I happen to have in front of me.
beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What, what looks cool. good to me may, may not happen for somebody else, but then somebody else will walk in and say, this is fantastic, I want it. Wild dancing queen, you know, and that's kind of how I've been feeling lately, so it's kind of expression of <laughs> me. I believe that color affects our emotions, it affects the way we think, it affects the way we feel. Color is energy, color is feeling, color is, gosh, color, I don't know how to describe color. And this gives us that connection to everything else that's within this universe where we reside.